Welcome to the RefWorks class. Um, today we're going to talk about RefWorks Classic, and I'm going to show you how to use it both as a tool to store the citations that you want to use, and also, and this is what people come to RefWorks for, as a tool to help you format the citations in your paper. So I'm going to go back to our homepage here. I did get that RefWorks tutorial here under the Research Guides area. I can either search for it or browse for it. But I'm going to go ahead and access the RefWorks Classic program here. And when you access it, you'll see there's a login screen. At this point, um, if you haven't created a login, you can click down here whoops, and sign up for a new account. RefWorks is actually unique among our library resources in that it gives you access after you graduate from GW. So unfortunately, many of our library resources and our library online access um, ends when you graduate, but that's not the case for RefWorks. Ref RefWorks actually grants alumni access, so you can keep using RefWorks as you move into a new position or into a new program um, and, and still find a need for it. In any case, I already have an account, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. Really, the two things that RefWorks can do for you is, one, it offers you a place to store and organize the citations that you're using in your research or writing. So here you can see I have um, citations here on my front panel. Over here on the right side, you can see I've organized these into um, folders. So I was looking at citations on hurricanes and public health and um, needle exchange in West Virginia and nosocomial pneumonia. So I sort of organized them into folders to help me find them more easily. For all this, almost all the citations that you put into RefWorks, you're going to pull them over automatically from another database. Be that PubMed, Scopus, Google Scholar, CINAHL, wherever you like to search, um, I would like to show you how to pull citations over there. So there's very little retyping with Scopus, I'm sorry, with RefWorks. Mostly you're going to pull citations from the locations where you're finding them anyway. Um, and then once they come into RefWorks, you, you see you can organize them into these folders. And I can also see the folders behind this tab here. And here you can see a little bit bigger. Um, I have 66 citations in my hurricanes and public health file. I had five on poison ivy um, and some other, some other sets here. Um, these buttons across the top here let me do a couple things that are very common to RefWorks, so I can create a new folder. I um, was trying to think of something fun to search on today, and I think we'll do, this is actually a terrible topic to search on, ice skating and health. You find out there's a lot of injuries with ice skating, but it seems appropriate for a snow day. I love ice skating. Um, but So you can see I've just created this ice skating and health folder. It has zero citations. Um, at any point, I'm going to pull up my poison ivy citations right now, and just because I, it's a smaller set of five. But at any point, you can make a bibliography from the citations in your folder. So here I've displayed these five poison ivy citations. And I'm just going to click on Create Bibliography. Um, and I'm going to switch this to, let's see, uh, APA 6th edition. And I'll click Create Bibliography. And it's going to give me, so here it gave me those citations, you can see here they are in beautiful APA format. And so if this is a paper I'm working on, I could copy this and put this in a bibliography. Or maybe I want to give an update to my faculty um, advisor on where I am with a project. I could copy and paste this into an email and let them know this is what I found and, and where I am with the project. And you can see up here it's, it's, put, it's opened it in a new tab. So I'm just going to go back to my main RefWorks tab, and here is that where I clicked on Create Bibliography. I'm going to X out of there. Um, as I said, for the most part, you're going to pull references automatically from wherever you search PubMed, CINAHL, Scopus, Google Scholar, but you can create a new reference on your own. And I find um, I do this m most often for websites and for reports on the Internet. So if I find something, maybe I find a CDC report or um, there's a set of a page of a CDC web page that I want to cite specifically. Here I can choose new reference 
and then up here I'll let it know what my favorite style is and the styles that are used most frequently around GW are the AMA style and the APA style so I'll switch to APA and then here you can really just type or copy and paste um, I'll say this is on poison ivy and um, preventive measures. So I should have done something on ice skating. Um, and also up here I can say, you know, what is this? This is a web page I'm citing. Or if I did have a report, there's the report. But I can tell it what type of document it is that I'm citing. And um, you all know I'm sort of just making this up as I go along in this case. Um, and then I can even choose which folder I'm going to put it in. So I'm going to put it right into my Poison IV folder and click um, Save Reference. It's going to give me a warning. It's used to having the authors in last name, first name format, but it will let me do an institutional author. It just gives me that little um, prompt. Um, and that's it. It gives me, lets me know down here in the lower right that that citation has been saved. So those are really the three most frequently accomplished tasks in RefWorks. Up here, there's the menus, uh, references. In a few minutes, I'm going to show you a use for the import functionality. We can use it with PubMed. Um, view and search let you look through your citations in different ways, or view lets you look through your library of citations. Search um, lets you search in an advanced way through your citations, and also lets you go out into some external sources which is fine. Um, I don't find it the most efficient use of the technology, but people, some people like it. Um, bibliography, I showed you how to create a bibliography. You can also pull up the output style manager. And all this is is um, the list of citation styles that RefWorks manages. For each of us at GW, when we get our account, we have it preloaded with a few different styles. But you can see there's a lot of styles in here. So I've loaded the styles for these different journals, BMC Genetics and Med Education, Critical Care Nursing, um, all sorts of different journals. So if I'm submitting an article to a particular journal, I can search it here and add the style in and have the, uh, my paper formatted per the citation style required by that journal. So if I wanted to add, for instance, academic medicine into my citation list, I'll just pop it over. And now I can use that as a citation style within my account. You'll notice my, my um, output style manager has some citation styles in red. And that's, those are citation styles that I've customized in my individual account for different projects. Customizing a citation style is something you totally can do in RefWorks, but probably you're not going to need to or want to. What I generally tell people is if you're submitting to a source, you're submitting it to a journal that's not well covered by cit the citation, the output styles offered by RefWorks, contact one of us librarians and we would be glad to create a custom style for you. It's something we do occasionally and we can do it pretty efficiently, but we'd much rather do it for you and leave you to the writing and research and let us worry about this sort of, um, you know, detail, detail oriented work with RefWorks. We'd rather you not take up your bandwidth with that. Um, but we are happy to show you how to do it if you're interested. Um, I'm going to get out of the Output Style Manager, and that was under Bibliography. Over here under Tools, the main tool I'm going to talk about tonight is this Write Insight. And this is the tool we can use when you go to write a paper. And I'm going to go ahead and show it to you now. For the most part, RefWorks is the tool. You can see we're just on a web page, and I'm going to show you how to load citations into it. But this Write Insight tool, I'm going to click on it. This is a tool that you're you will download and install on your computer, and it will work with um, different versions of Word. It works with Macs and PCs, and you can see it's already kind of detecting that I'm on a PC and making a recommendation. But there are many other versions of it, and hopefully one is compatible with your computer. They're, they're pretty widely compatible. Um, but this is something you'll download and install. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how that works. 
So I've now quickly switched over to um, to my Word, and I'm just going to move this a little bit so I can see it a little better. So here in the Word, I have, um, you can see I have all the menus like I have in a regular Word document. But by installing right inside in my computer, I have this extra menu, the RefWorks menu. And so here I can type my paper. Um, so I'm still typing about ice skating is great exercise, but can be a bit dangerous. And then if I'm going to cite that, I switch over into my RefWorks tab, and I can choose Insert Citations. These are, and I'll choose Insert New. And here you're going to see, oh, that looks um, familiar. This Actually, this might be my other RefWorks account. But you can see in here, oh no, here's Hurricanes and Public Health. Um, if I want to insert one of these citations, I just click on it and then click Insert, and it puts it right in there. Um, then I can continue writing my paper. And I'm going to go ahead and add another citation in. I'll click Insert New. I'll choose it from a different folder this time. And I can keep writing and citing as I go. At any point, I can use the bi Insert Bibliography feature here. And I'm going to insert the bibliography. And you can see now the power of RefWorks. I have the, the beautiful in-text citations along with the reference list. What I would like to do right now is show you how to load citations into RefWorks. So if you all could let me know, either by just talking or by entering it in the chat window, which um, where do you find citations for your projects? Are you searching PubMed, CINAHL, Scopus, other sources? And then I'll show you how to pull those citations into RefWorks. OK, so I see PubMed, wonderful. So CINAHL, I love that. And I want to start with, with CINAHL just because it works so beautifully with RefWorks. And then we'll also do PubMed, which also works nicely with RefWorks. So I'm going to go ahead and log out of my RefWorks account. I'm going to go back to the library homepage. Um, and I have CINAHL here. The version of CINAHL we have is actually CINAHL Plus with full text which means we've tried to integrate as much. We've you know, purchased uh, a CINAHL package that has a lot of full text embedded, and then we've added even more full text from other parts of our collection onto it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to search for articles. And I realize this is um, not really necessarily a compelling nursing topic, but I feel committed now, although I'm willing to take suggestions. Whoop. Um, so we'll just look for articles that have ice skating in the title of them. Um, we've got some interesting things. So to get some of these results into Scopus, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through and say, oh, this looks interesting. Effect of weighted skates on ice skating. Uh, here's helmet policy. So I'm interested in safety. So I'm going to grab that one. Another helmet policy one. Ice skating players. Ah, uh, physiological well-being. That sounds great ice skating injury severity. OK, so I've marked four of these citations. And that just means that they've been added to my personal folder up here. Um, I could go through onto the next screen if I wanted. Um, I have several screens of results here and keep adding citations. So if I find another um, citation I like, I'm going to grab that one. I can add it to the folder. And then when I'm ready to move them over to RefWorks, I'm just going to go up to the top and click on my folder. And I should have five of them, them now. And I do. So here's those citations I just sort of marked. And you can see there, um, for the most part, there's full text embedded here. Some of, most of them also, if, if they don't have the PDF, they have a full text link here that I can follow to get out to the full text article. But what I want to do with them right now is move them over into RefWorks. And to do that, I'm just going to say select, just said select all of those five. And I'm going to use over here on the right the Export button and click Export. And you can see now it's sort of set up for me. The default button here says Direct Export to RefWorks, which is what I want to do. So all I have to do here is click Save. And then it's 
the system is going to open RefWorks for me, and I have the legacy RefWorks, and you can see it works just the same for the newer version of RefWorks, but I'm going to choose legacy RefWorks, and in this case, I know I'm going to be working with legacy RefWorks tonight, so I'm going to choose um, to don't, I won't see this choice screen again. So it has me log in. Again, I have my personal account within GW's account, so I'm just going to log into it. And once I hit log in here, it's going to start the process of downloading those citations for me or importing those citations. So you can see here, it did that in just a few seconds. Import completed, five references. Down here at the bottom of this box, there's, oops, there's two options. View duplicates, if I want to check if maybe I'd already downloaded these citations previously, or view last imported folder, which is what I'm going to choose. Um, every time you bring new citations into your uh, RefWorks account, it puts them into this last imported folder. And if we look here, there they all are, skating on thin ice, the effect of ice skating on psychological well-being. And now, if I want, I can put them in the folder I created earlier. I created this ice skating and health folder. And to keep make them findable, sort of easily findable to me when I go um, back to write my paper later, I could put them all in this folder. If I don't put them in the folder, there's no disaster. They're still in your account. They're still saved. This is just a convenience and a finding mechanism. And for, for you all starting out with RefWorks, it, it may be fine if you don't put things in folders, but I find once you get beyond um, 50 or so citations, the folders do help. So here, I'm going to put them in my folder for demonstration purposes. And all I'm going to say up here is say, of these references, take all in the list, which is all five of them, and then I'm going to hover over my folder list and choose um, my ice skating folder. There it is, ice skating and health. And if we look over at our folder list now, where's ice skating and health, it now has those five citations in it. So I'm going to go back there. Um, and so you can see here they are, and they do look nice. I got all the journal information. Um, the citation volume year, everything. Here, these find it buttons, these are just like the find it buttons in other parts of our collections. They should be able to link you back to the copy within our collection. So I've clicked on it, it's trying to find me the full text, and here it did. It, find me, it found me the full text of this in the Himmelfarb Libraries collection. can even read the PDF if I want. There it is. So I wanted to show you that although you know, what we're bringing over to RefWorks is just the citation. So if we look at this, all of what we pulled over using the magnifying glass, it's all this data about the article, but we didn't pull over a PDF. We can still use these Find It links to go back and see the PDF in GW's collection. So that's a nice attribute. I'm going to show you PubMed first, and well, I'm going to tell you, I want to tell you first, for most databases, if you're a Scopus searcher or you search on the library's homepage, you search this one search tool, it's very similar to CINAHL. You choose what you want, you hit export, it says RefWorks, yes, it all happens sort of automatically. Um, PubMed is a little bit different. You're still not going to be retyping and typing, but there are some extra steps to do. And so let me show you how this works. I'm going to do just a really quick search. I'll again just do ice skating and I'll just look for that in the title of the article and I'm using a very librarian-y shortcut to do that. Um, but similar, here's the weighted skates article again. I'm going to choose um, a few articles. We might already have that Helmet policy one. So here, here's one on postural control, orthopedic injuries, oh, functional mobility. That sounds interesting. So I'm going to choose these three articles that I'm interested in, and I'm going to go ahead and choose send these to the clipboard. I don't know if, if you all have used the clipboard before, but this is the same exact idea as the My Folder in CINAHL. This is just a sort of a holding spot where you can say, these are the articles I'm interested in. So I'll actually go out, and just like with CINAHL, you can go from page to page. Um, so here's one on head injuries. 
um, mood. And I'm going to add these. I'm going to also send these. Or should I get one so we have a different number? Um, indoor air quality. So I'm going to send these ones to the clipboard and get six. And you can keep doing this. You can actually move um, as many as 200 citations at a time from PubMed to uh, RefWorks, which we do frequently for systematic reviews or, or big review articles. But in this case, I just want to show you how to move these six. To move these six, I'm going to go ahead and, and view them again. And then there's, there's a little trick here. We're going to, um, rather than having an export button, RefWorks or PubMed sort of makes us do the legwork ourselves. So all we really need to do in PubMed is change this from this nice human readable format where we have the title hyperlinked and the authors and journal information are in sort of different size fonts. We're going to change this from this nicely human readable format to a machine readable format. And all that is is changing the format here from summary to medline. And once we do that, you're going to see, oh yeah, it's just tagged the PMID field, who owns this citation, what's the status, and down here you can see AB, the abstract, the authors, the first author, the other authors. So all we need to do, we don't need to massage this at all, we're not going to do anything fancy, I'm just going to do select all and then copy. And then I'm going to move over into RefWorks and we're going to import it. We have this data, we want to pull it into our account, so I'll choose import. And I'm going to tell it where the data is coming from. And here it's coming from NLM PubMed. The first time you do this, you're going to have to surf, you know, through this long alphabetic list down to the end section. But once you do that for the first time, NLM PubMed is going to be at the top. You choose it, and it says, oh, you got that from the database PubMed. And then we're going to import text. So here where it says from text, it kind of was funny, but I popped it open. And then I'm just going to paste that long thing. I don't have to do anything to it. I'll just paste it and hit import. And you can see just as fast as the other method, six references imported. We can use the button here, view last imported. Here they all are, head injuries and winter sports, the indoor air quality, postural control. And once again, I'm going to choose, actually it remembered all in list and I can put them right into my ice skating folder. Oops, there it is, ice skating and health. So now we have 11 documents in there. Um, and those are really, those are the main ways you can pull things, things in um, most databases like CINAHL um, or like the health information at HIMAL, there's HIMALFARB, the search tool, they'll have an export feature and you'll click that and it'll, it'll give you the option to choose to send them to RefWorks and then sort of the machine takes over. PubMed's the only one where you do a little bit of the legwork up front in terms of putting it into this Medline format, copying it, and then using the import button over here. I do just want to show you quickly here on the Himmelfarb homepage. Um, earlier I showed you the RefWorks help here. So I'm going to go into RefWorks Classic. And I just want to reassure you here, importing citations, it has instructions. And if I look at the PubMed one, it gives me all of that information I just showed you. So if you get stuck, you're working this weekend, and you're like, oh, what was the format? We do have it all written down. You switch it into Medline format, go into RefWorks, choose Import, choose the NLM PubMed. We've tried to make this, you don't have to store this in your memory, just know it's stored here um, for your use. Also on this guide, you can see there's other sources here. That actually, LexisNexis has a new name. We'll update that. But if you use Google Scholar, um, you can pull it in from other sources too. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my Word document and just look at that again. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and start over. Um, and this. Um, So I'm going to start my paper and just remind you, so you remember when we went to insert our citation, I'm, 
I'm going to start writing my ice skating paper. I just added all those citations into RefWorks. But if I go to RefWorks right now, I'm going to go to Insert New, GHI. My ice skating folder is not there. Well, that's because I went ahead. This, this I'm working in Word, and it when I loaded Word, it refreshed the, what it knew about was in my RefWorks account. But since I did that, I added those new citations. So I'm going to hit Cancel here. And I'm going to go up here and say sync my database. And what this is going to do is RefWorks is going to, the, you know, RefWorks as it exists here within Word is going to check back with my online RefWorks account and figure out what's new. Um, and I keep <laughs> trying to talk. I don't know if you noticed, my RefWorks account is huge. Um, so my RefWorks account takes a few extra seconds to sync, and yours should not take nearly so long. Okay, so now it came back, and you can see the RefWorks, the number of uh, options on the RefWorks screen, there's really not that many things you can do here. The main thing you can do is insert a citation. Um, I can change the style of the citation, so I'm going to show you this in a minute if I want to use a different citation style. Maybe I prefer to try AMA. We're going to try that. Um, I can insert the bibliography or remove it. Format the bibliography I'm going to show you, but I haven't had to use it very often. Um, or, and I also haven't had to use reapply output style. Um, sync my database, I just showed you, that just refreshes sort of the connection with your online RefWorks account. So if you've added a new citation in there, you can have access to it as you write your paper. And then I'm going to explain this in a minute. So let's get started. Um, I've written my paper. I'm going to go ahead and insert a citation, insert new. And now I really do want citations, and we can say, hey, there's my ice skating and health one. So I can choose the citation I want, and once I click on it, it pops it down to this lower area. So it says, oh, you chose Keller M. Do you want the ice skating promotes postural control? And I'm going to say, yes, I do. I'm going to click OK. And it puts the placeholder citation in there. You can see this is an APA. It's author date, which is what I have chosen. Um, and then... I can continue writing my paper. And in this case, I want to add two citations in. So I'm going to, again, choose Insert Citation, Insert New. I'll go to my ice skating folder. Um, I do wish this little window was a little bit bigger, but I'm going to choose another citation. I'll choose Walsh. But I want to cite two citations here. So I've popped what I clicked on Walsh and it popped it down to this lower area and I'm going to go ahead and use the plus button here and all that's going to do is create a blank space so that I can go up and choose another citation. So now I have two citations here and I can keep doing that. If I want to add another citation I could just add a Schwarzkopf. As soon as I've added all the citations I want I'll click on OK and you can see it put them all back here out here at the end. Um, at any point, I can go ahead and do insert site bibliography, and you can see it put them in. And then if for some reason I want to take it out, I can do remove bibliography. Um, I have to say, the only <laughs> trouble I've seen people have here, and it's totally happened to me too, is they'll have their cursor somewhere here in the middle of the paper, and then say insert bibliography, and then you can see it put it in right in the middle of the paper. So we're going to remove that again, and you want to put it in, have your cursor at the end of your paper when you insert it. But even after you insert your bibliography, um, you can still write and cite. So I'm going to go ahead and add another citation in. I'm going to choose Insert Citation and choose another new one from my ice skating folder. I'll choose Bar in this case. So I clicked on it. It popped it down here. I click OK. And you can see it added it where I wanted the in-text citation, but it also automatically put it into the bibliography for me. So it will keep up with you as you add citations to the paper. It will keep the bibliography up to date for you. One thing I mentioned that we would, that I would show you is this I've written in APA format. So APA is an author date format. So it tells me the authors and here 2014, the date this article was published. And then the bibliography list is in alphabetical order by author. 
but there's other options for citation styles, and one of the other popular citation styles, and, and many other popular citation styles, use a numbered format. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the AMA format, and I'm going to, up here in my Write Insight window, I'm just going to switch over to AMA, and it's taking effect. And you can see here now, instead of the author date, I have the numbers in superscript. So there's a tiny time. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger. Ooh, okay. So you can see here I have the superscript one. Remember, I cited three citations at once, so it's two through four, and there's my fifth citation. And then it reordered them here, too, so they're no longer in alphabetical order. They're in the order of appearance. Um, RefWorks handles all of these citation styles really well. You can choose whatever. If I want to switch over, here's uniform requirements for manuscripts submitted to biomedical journals. I'm going to switch into that. And you can see now it also is a numbered style, but the numbers are in parentheses. The one uh, recommendation I would give you is maybe you're submitting to a journal or your faculty likes one of these numbered styles like AMA or the uniform requirements. My recommendation would be to even if your, your end result is going to look more like this with a numbered style, still write in um, the author date style. This is good for two reasons. One, as I'm writing the paper, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I got that table as the same, you know, in the same, from the same article that other thing was. That was from Keller, Rotker, and Taub. So I know what I want to cite better because it has the name here. If I have this in a numbered style, I just know that it's number one. I have to look down here that it's number one. If I add another citation in, they're going to renumber. Keller's no longer going to be number one. I have to keep sort of tracing myself back to figure out what I want to cite where. But if I have it in the APA style or a different uh, author date style, it doesn't happen. The other thing is whenever, if I'm working on one of these numbered styles, it can be a little bit slower. It's not going to be slow right now because I've only got two lines of text, but I know um, I've worked with faculty members who are working on a chapter and they've got 35, 55, 70 pages of text and they add a citation in. All of those, they add a citation in here, I'm going to add something in. Everything has to be renumbered while um, that happens, especially if I add it in earlier. I'm going to add another one in here. I'll add Schwarzkopf in there. Um, it's going to have to renumerate every citation um, in order to make it work. So I recommend, if, even if you want to end up in a, one of these numbered styles, start, write your paper and work in APA or something similar, and then right before you turn it in, you can hit the button and have RefWorks work its magic and put it into the numbered style. I'm waiting for it to happen right now. So there it is. We did sync my database. Remove field codes. This happens occasionally if you're writing for publication, you're submitting, if you're submitting to the American Journal of Public Health. They're fine with you using RefWorks, but RefWorks does add a lot of programming in the background here. So they, sometimes journals will say, I, I, the, I like the references to look as good as they look with thing, when you use something like RefWorks. I just don't want all the extra programming. So you can save a copy of your article with the RefWorks code in the background, and then you can remove the field codes and save a separate copy uh, without the field codes. You're going to want the, a copy with the field codes, because if I submit this uh, to a journal or to my faculty member or whoever, and then you know in a few days I get it back with comments and I need to add a new citation, I definitely want to use this copy that has all the programming, because then I can continue to use RefWorks. And I could add, oh, you know, I forgot I was going to add a citation in here. Um, I have this citation, I change the citation, um, 
and so I can keep working with it and have RefWorks continue to do the work of doing the citations and the in-text citations for me. But if I only save the version where I've removed the field codes, I'm kind of back to square one and I have to do it manually. Um, and that's really how RefWorks works. Uh, if we go back over here to our, our account, the online RefWorks account, this is your storage area, your organization area. You can create folders for courses, projects, papers, and then you download this Write Insight tool onto your personal computer, or you can use the computers in the library. They all have Write Insight on them, and then that's what allows you to do the in-text citations and, and generate the bibliography for the end of your paper. So I had a question here from earlier, and I'm sorry, I, I must not have seen these come in. Let's see. So, trying, so showing you PubMed. So let me show you PubMed, how to get those citations over again. Um, so PubMed, let's see, we're going to look for articles really quick on blizzards. We didn't really have a blizzard today here, but I love snow. So I'm going to choose. Um, First of all, I'm going to go ahead and go into my clipboard, and I'm going to empty it out just so we're starting fresh. So the question was moving at citations from, um, oops, let me refresh that. Sorry. So I had six citations here. Um, and you can see my clipboard is empty now. So before I showed you how to move these citations into the clipboard um, in order to put them into pub, from PubMed into RefWorks, in this case, I'm going to show you, because we only have six citations, let's move all six. So if I wanted to move them, wanted a, you know, just a few of them, I could send them to the clipboard and then move it there. But I'm actually going to just move all of them, all six. So, but it's the same process. Basically, we're going to take it from this nice human readable format, and I'm going to switch the format up here from summary to Medline. And you're going to see Medline is tagged. So it says, oh, here's TI for the title of the article. Here's um, IS, this is one of the ISSN numbers, the International Standard Serial Number. Here's the author information. But to get these from PubMed to RefWorks, we're just going to do a select all and just copy the whole thing. And then over in RefWorks, we'll choose import. And here at the top, we're going to let RefWorks know where we're pulling this information. And we're pulling it from NLM PubMed. And once you choose NLM PubMed, it will fill in the database for you. The system knows NLM PubMed has PubMed. Um, and then down here from text, I'll click there and it'll give me an empty box and I can just right click or control V. But in any case, I'm just going to paste that whole set of text. I didn't massage it at all. I just copied it and pasted it in and then I'll click import. Um, you see it's that fast. Import completed, six references. I can look at them in my last imported folder. And I did get how lizards survived blizzards, um, blizzards and range cattle, a, a very diverse set of articles. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say, put, take all of these in my list. They're a little off topic for ice skating, but we're going to put them in there anyway. And you can see it bumped up. The number of articles I have in my ice skating folder is now up. Whoops, isn't it? Yeah. It's up to 17, one of 17. The references, once they hit your account, they're yours to do with as you wish. So maybe um, you graduate from GW, you go to a different institution and are working on research, and they use a different reference manager. Maybe they use EndNote. You can export your RefWorks library, um, export it into a format that they, you can then import into EndNote. All of these citation managers uh, do about the same thing. They do. They each do it in their own way, but they also uh, do have functionality to share with each other. So if you have a colleague who uses EndNote, you'll be able to export a copy of your RefWorks library and 
imported into EndNote. And similarly, if you have a colleague with an EndNote library who wants to give you their library, they can export it and you'll be able to import it into RefWorks. So they all do sort of, you know, you can you can cross, you can you can change. <laughs> So your RefWork, the question I'm getting here is that your RefWorks account doesn't look the same. I am working today in classic RefWorks, and I'm just going to go out here. We do have two versions of RefWorks, and I mentioned this right at the beginning. Um, so here I'm going to go, this is our databases page, and I'm going to go under research tools. And you can see there's RefWorks Legacy, RefWorks Classic, which is what I've been showing you tonight. There's also new RefWorks. Um, and this is one, a newer interface. It does the same thing. Let me just go in. But the screens look much more updated. Um, the newer RefWorks also has the attribute of working, having a plugin to work with Google Docs. So where I showed you in Word, the Write Insight plugin, the new RefWorks has something like that that works with Google Docs, which is um, a nice feature. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pull those citations in. So here you can see I can import the citations. Um, in this case, for the new RefWorks, and I don't want to confuse you guys too much, but if I did want to import those citations from PubMed, Rather than doing the copy-paste, I would create a text file of them um, and then import that text file, you can see. So it works very similarly. Um, I don't want to uh, make this too confusing tonight. So if you do want to use a new RefWorks, I'd be happy to set up a private tutorial and show you. There's just a few things that are different, but overall it works very much the same. <laughs> 